Well, it's Tuesday, dear friends, the 14th of February. It is day 45 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible, where we let the Bible do what the Bible does and direct our hearts to the one who is the living word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. And so we come from far and wide, we come to warm ourselves by the fires of God's presence and his love to remind our hearts that we are children of God, that we are loved by him. And that, my friend, is such good news. Well, today, we continue on in our journey through the Bible. It is in Leviticus chapters 23 through 24, then Psalm 24, and we'll finish our reading in Acts 21. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness to speak to our hearts. Help us now. Leviticus 23. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. These are the Lord's appointed festivals which you are to proclaim as official days for holy assembly. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest, an official day for holy assembly. It is the Lord's Sabbath day, and it must be observed wherever you live. In addition to the Sabbath, these are the Lord's appointed festivals, the official days for holy assembly that are to be celebrated at their proper times each year. The Lord's Passover begins at sundown on the fourteenth day of the first month. On the next day, the fifteenth day of the month, you must begin celebrating the festival of unleavened bread. This festival to the Lord continues for seven days, and during that time the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, all the people must stop their ordinary work and observe an official day for holy assembly. For seven days you must present special gifts to the Lord. On the seventh day, the people must again stop all their ordinary work to observe an official day for holy assembly. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you enter the land I am giving you and you harvest its first crops, bring the priest a bundle of grain from its first cutting of your grain harvest. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest will lift it up before the Lord so it may be accepted on your behalf. On that same day you must sacrifice a one-year-old male lamb with no defects as a burnt offering to the Lord. With it you must present a grain offering consisting of four quarts of choice flour moistened with olive oil. It will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. You must also offer one quart of wine as a liquid offering. Do not eat any bread or roasted grain or fresh kernels on that day until you bring this offering to your God. This is a permanent law for you. It must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, fifteen days later. Then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. Make these loaves from four quarts of choice flour and bake them with yeast. They will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops. Along with the bread, present seven one-year-old male lambs with no defects, one young bull, and two rams as burnt offerings to the Lord. These burnt offerings, together with the grain offerings and the liquid offerings, will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Then you must offer one male goat as a sin offering and two one-year-old male lambs as a peace offering. The priest will lift up the two lambs as a special offering to the Lord, together with the loaves representing the first of your crops. These offerings, which are holy to the Lord, belong to the priest. That same day will be proclaimed an official day for holy assembly, a day in which you do no ordinary work. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. Leave it for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. The Lord said to Moses, 
Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. On the first day of the appointed month in early autumn, you are to observe a day of complete rest. It will be an official day for holy assembly, a day commemorated with the loud blasts of a trumpet. You must do no ordinary work on that day. Instead, you are to present special gifts to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Be careful to celebrate the Day of Atonement on the tenth day of the same month, nine days after the Festival of Trumpets. You must observe it as an official day for holy assembly, a day to deny yourself and present special gifts to the Lord. Do no work during the entire day because it is the Day of Atonement. When offerings of purification are made for you, making you right with the Lord your God, all who do not deny themselves that day will be cut off from God's people, and I will destroy anyone among you who does any work on that day. You must not do any work at all. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. This will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and on that day you must deny yourselves. This day of rest will begin at sundown on the ninth day of the month and will extend until sundown on the tenth day. And the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Begin celebrating the festival of shelters on the fifteenth day of the appointed month, five days after the Day of Atonement. This festival to the Lord will last for seven days. On the first day of the festival, you must proclaim an official day for holy assembly. When you do no ordinary work, For seven days you must present special gifts to the Lord. The eighth day is another holy day on which you present your special gifts to the Lord. This will be a solemn occasion, and no ordinary work may be done on that day. These are the Lord's appointed festivals. Celebrate them each year as official days for holy assembly by presenting special gifts to the Lord. Burnt offerings, grain offerings, sacrifices, and liquid offerings, each on its proper day— These festivals will be preserved in addition to the Lord's regular Sabbaths, and the offerings are in addition to your personal gifts, the offerings you give to fulfill your vows, and the voluntary offerings you present to the Lord. Remember that this seven-day festival to the Lord, the Festival of Shelters, begins on the fifteenth day of the appointed month. After you have harvested all the produce of the land, the first and the eighth day of the festival will be days of complete rest. On the first day, gather branches from magnificent trees, palm fronds, boughs from leafy trees, and willows that grow by the streams. Then celebrate with joy before the Lord your God for seven days. You must observe this festival to the Lord for seven days every year. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed in the appointed month from generation to generation. For seven days you must live outside in little shelters, All native-born Israelites must live in shelters. This will remind each new generation of Israelites that I made their ancestors live in shelters when I rescued them from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses gave the Israelites these instructions regarding the annual festivals of the Lord. Leviticus 24 The Lord said to Moses, Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to keep the lamps burning continually. This is the lampstand that stands in the tabernacle in front of the inner curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant. Aaron must keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation. Aaron and his priest must tend the lamps on the pure gold lamp stands continually in the Lord's presence. You must bake twelve flat loaves of bread from choice flour, using four quarts of flour for each loaf. Place the bread before the Lord on the pure gold table and arrange the loaves in two stacks with six loaves in each stack. Put some pure frankincense near each stack to serve as a representative offering, a special gift presented to the Lord. Every Sabbath day this bread must be laid out before the Lord as a gift from the Israelites It is an ongoing expression of the eternal covenant. The loaves of bread will belong to Aaron and his descendants, who must eat them in a sacred place, for they are most holy. It is the permanent right of the priest to claim this portion of the special gifts presented to the Lord. One day a man who had an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father came out of his tent and got into a fight with one of the Israelite men. During the fight... This son of an Israelite woman blasphemed the name of the Lord with a curse, 
So the man was brought to Moses for judgment. His mother was Shalometh, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. They kept the man in custody until the Lord's will in the matter should become clear to them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the blasphemer outside the camp and tell all those who heard the curse to lay their hands on his head. Then the entire community stoned him to death. Say to the people of Israel, Those who curse their God will be punished for their sin. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord will be stoned to death by the whole community of Israel. Any native-born Israelite or foreigner living among you who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. Anyone who takes another person's life must be put to death. Anyone who kills another person's animal must pay for it in full. A live animal for the animal that was killed. Anyone who injures another person must be dealt with according to the injury inflicted. A fracture for a fracture, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Whatever anyone does to injure another person must be paid back in kind. Whoever kills an animal must pay for it in full, and whoever kills another person must be put to death. This same standard applies both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. After Moses gave all these instructions to the Israelites, they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him to death. The Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Psalm 24 A Psalm of David The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundations on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship you in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies, he is the King of glory. Acts 21 After saying farewell to the Ephesian elders, he sailed straight to the island of Kos. The next day we reached Rhodes, and then we went to Patara. There we boarded a ship sailing for Phoenicia. We sighted the island of Cyprus, passed it on our left, and landed at the harbor of Tyre in Syria, where the ship was to unload its cargo. We went ashore, found the local believers, and stayed with them a week. These believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go on to Jerusalem. When we returned to the ship at the end of the week, the entire congregation, including women and children, left the city and came down to the shore with us. There we knelt, prayed, and said our farewells. Then we went aboard, and they returned home. The next stop after leaving Tyre was Ptolemais, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed for one day. The next day we went on to Caesarea and stayed at the home of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven men who had been chosen to distribute food. He had four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. Several days later, a man named Agabus, who also had the gift of prophecy, arrived from Judea. He came over, took Paul's belt, and bound his own feet and hands with it. Then he said, The Holy Spirit declares... So shall the owner of this belt be bound by the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and turned over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the local believers all begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But he said, Why all this weeping? You're breaking my heart. I am ready not only to be jailed at Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of the Lord Jesus. When it was clear that we couldn't persuade him, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. After this, we packed our things and left for Jerusalem. Some believers from Caesarea accompanied us, and they took us to the home of Manasseh, a man originally from Cyprus and one of the early believers. When we arrived, the brothers and sisters in Jerusalem welcomed us warmly. 
The next day, Paul went with us to meet with James, and all the elders of the Jerusalem church were present. After greeting them, Paul gave a detailed account of the things God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. After hearing this, they praised God. And then they said, You know, dear brother, how many thousands of Jews have also believed. And they all followed the law of Moses very seriously. But the Jewish believers here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their backs on the law of Moses. They've heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or to follow Jewish customs. What should we do? They will certainly hear that you've come. Here's what we want you to do. We have four men here who have completed their vow. Go with them to the temple and join them in the purification ceremony, paying for them to have their heads ritually shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are all false and that you yourself observe the Jewish laws. As for the Gentile believers, they should do what we already told them in a letter. They should abstain from eating food offered to idols, from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. So Paul went to the temple the next day with the other men. They had already started the purification ritual, so he publicly announced the date when their vows would end and the sacrifice would be offered for each of them. The seven days were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused a mob against him. They grabbed him, yelling, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who preaches against our people everywhere and tells everyone to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple and even defiles this holy place by bringing in Gentiles. For earlier that day they had seen him in the city with Trophimus, a Gentile from Ephesus, and they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. The whole city was rocked by these accusations, and a great riot followed. Paul was grabbed and dragged out of the temple, and immediately the gates were closed behind him. As they were trying to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman regiment that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately called out his soldiers and officers and ran down among the crowd. When the mob saw the commander and the troops coming, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander arrested him and ordered him bound with two chains. He asked the crowd who he was and what he had done. Some shouted one thing and some another. Since he couldn't find out the truth in all the uproar and confusion, he ordered that Paul be taken to the fortress. As Paul reached the stairs, the mob grew so violent, the soldiers had to lift him to their shoulders and protect him, and the crowd followed behind, shouting, Kill him! Kill him! As Paul was about to be taken inside, he said to the commander, May I have a word with you? Do you know Greek? the commander asked, surprised. Aren't you the Egyptian who led a rebellion some time ago and took 4,000 members of the assassins out into the desert? No, Paul replied. I am a Jew and a citizen of Tarsus in Cilicia, which is an important city. Please, let me talk to these people. The commander agreed. So Paul stood on the stairs and motioned to the people to be quiet. Soon a deep silence enveloped the crowd, and he addressed them in their own language, Aramaic. And now, Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and the hearing of your word. Amen. This life of faith requires two feet to walk. We live in this tension. On one hand, we go through things and we want to be healed and delivered. We want things to work out, and at times God is delighted to do just that, to provide, to heal, to deliver. So one step of faith is asking for and seeking these things from God. But with the other foot, the other step that we must take is to understand that this light and momentary affliction is working out for us something of eternal importance. The life of faith often entails learning to walk amidst those two very real tensions where we hold firm to the promise that God is indeed our healer, our deliverer, redeemer, he will indeed do all that he has promised. And yet at the same time, there very well may be something that he wants to teach us through it. Maybe he will choose to heal you today, and maybe he won't. But we also know that we will indeed be healed. All of creation will be restored in him, and that day is coming. In the meantime, whatever the affliction that you're suffering through, it is momentary and in the scales of eternity, Paul says they are light. It may not feel like that right here, right now, 
but faith in God's goodness helps us to see beyond the right here and the right now. And faith is an invitation to enter into the presence of God, His healing, His deliverance, His redemption isn't just designated for some distant time. We can begin to experience those things in part, even today. God has something he wants to teach us all, and we need to trust him and walk with him through all that life brings us. He'll prove himself strong in our weakness. He will be your comforter and your strength. Walk this way of faith with both feet and trust him each step of the way. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. I just want to remind you all that we have a book that is soon to be out and we want to make sure that you get your very own copy The book is called Discovering Jesus, A Journey Through Lent, written by Heather Barnes. And it's amazing. It is really good. And I really want you to get a copy of it. So much so that we are going to give them away. All you have to do is send me an email at hunter at dailyradiobible.com and we will sign you up. So make sure you get your copy of Discovering Jesus. And to make sure that you get all these resources that we want to bless you with, sign up for our newsletter. That way you don't miss a thing. And you can do that at our webpage, dailyradiobible.com. Well, before I let you all go today, I want to send a shout out to some folks. These are the people that make the podcast possible. This podcast and ministry is entirely listener supported. And so a big thank you to Cecilia May Carter, Terry Morgan, Eugenia Pena, Cindy Boulage, Becky Hutton, Christina Blaney, and Samantha Goodwin. Blessings to you, my partners in the work of the Lord. If you're listening today and you'd like to join that group of folks that is so needed and so appreciated, all you have to do is head on over to the webpage, click on that donate link, and sign up for a one-time gift or a reoccurring gift, which is a great help to us, by the way. It allows us to be much more intentional when it comes to budgeting and growing this ministry. Again, just head on over to the webpage and click on that donate link. Well, hey friends, I'm going to be on my way now, but what do you say we all show up again here tomorrow and we'll do it again? Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time, let's go forward. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. Let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.